right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Martez Reed, Director of Technical Marketing with Morpheus Data. In this webinar, we're gonna walk through what's new um, in the upcoming release of the Morpheus platform, 5.3.1. We're gonna walk through some technical details about the various changes and improvements that have been made in the platform. So let's take a look at a summary of the various changes, feature ads, improvements within the 5.3.1 release that is tentatively upcoming in the next few weeks. So there have been major updates and improvements to the GCP support. So things like updates to the project and in cloud integration scoping to simplify the integration, improved network support, changes to infrastructure as code. So improvements to the Terraform integration, as well as the AWS CloudFormation integration. Kubernetes, so adding support for Kubernetes 1.20, as well as improvements to cluster management functionality within the platform. VDI persona, VDI is going GA with this release. As part of that, there are scalability enhancements to ensure that VDI can scale to hundreds or thousands of desktops. And then in addition to that, there are other various improvements to the platform, such as internal CMDB for visibility of resources, native two-factor authentication, improvements to NSXT as well as NSXV, improvements to the Ansible Tower integration, and then additionally being able to manage uh, and create the integrations via the API, the CLI. So let's dive into some of the details. The GCP support. So as I mentioned, at its, at its, we added support in the 5.3.1 release for scoping the cloud integration to all projects in all regions. What this means is the ability to add the integration within Morpheus and specify all projects in all regions. This eliminates the need to add individual regions as part of the integration to avoid the sprawl of clouds within Morpheus for those particular GCP regions. Similar to the improvement that was made for the Azure integration in the 5.3.0 release of the Morpheus platform, this is a similar enhancement for GCP. Improved network support. So as part of this release, there have been uh, a lot of changes to the network support in terms of what is supported by the integration. So one of the things of note is the uh, distinct support now for networks and subnets for GCP within the Morpheus platform. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that any existing blueprints that were created via GCP uh, if one of the networks or subnets uh, was used, it now needs to potentially be updated to support the differentiation in the Morpheus platform of subnets and networks for GCP. In addition to that, there's a, a number of resources from a networking standpoint that have been added for manageability within the platform, such as networks, subnets, routers, network firewalls, NAT gateways. So this continues to improve and enhance the capability of the platform with uh, GCP. So question came through, when will 5.3.1 be available for download? There is no, no date specific at the moment. It'll be within the next couple of weeks. So that's, that's when 5.3.1 will be available. There will be a, a, an announcement around when it will be available, as well as via the normal channels. Yeah, so another question came through. So simplifying all of regions is applicable only to GCP? No, it's not only applicable to GCP. Um, so it is there, as I mentioned, in 5.3.0 was added for Azure, uh, and I believe it's there for AWS as well. All right, feel, feel free to, to keep shooting over questions as we go through. So one of the other items of note with the 
5.3.1 release as far as GCP support is improved pricing sync to support granular resource-based pricing. And what that means is the ability uh, now within the platform to specify at a more granular level of the resource. So CPU, as well as memory, as well as storage. Previously, it was just compute or CPU and uh, storage. So now it's more granular in terms of the pricing as uh, Google Cloud has a, a more granular pricing model. So the next thing is taking a look at infrastructure as code within Morpheus. So the Morpheus platform supports various uh, infrastructure as code integrations, Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, ARM templates, as well as Morpheus blueprints within the platform to be able to uh, declare infrastructure via what we typically term as code, the industry terms as code. Um, so it's languages like HCL, um, using something like JSON or YAML to specify or declare what the resources should be. So this release includes enhancements or improvements to the Terraform integration as well as the CloudFormation integration. So one thing we'll take a look at first is the Terraform integration. So this release adds uh, native management of IaaS instances provisioned via Terraform. So this enables Terraform instances, IaaS instances to be treated in, in the same way as instances provisioned via Morpheus um, native constructs. So going into the Morpheus UI and provisioning an instance and then being able to manage the full life cycle as well as tie uh, workflows and automation orchestration to that particular instance. So what this does is enables the, the ability to tie phase-based uh, operations or workflows to instances provisioned via Terraform. So we got a question that came through. By using infrastructure as code, do we have the capability of deploying to multi-cloud using the same blueprint for multi-tier application? Uh, it's certainly possible. There is some complexity as it relates to that. Uh, so the question is around being able to use a single um, infrastructure as code declaration or blueprint, um, spec template blueprint, uh, to be able to provision to multiple clouds using a multi-tier application. Uh, so the follow-on is currently has the ability to deploy only to a single cloud at a time. So there are aspects that would constrict that. Um, so at the moment, uh, I do not believe there's the ability to deploy to multiple clouds using the same blueprint. Uh, so there are other aspects related to the infrastructure as code that um, in order to be able to manage that, create uh, issues with provisioning to multiple clouds at the same time. All right, so if we jump back to infrastructure as code with Terraform. So we added the ability to uh, attach provisioning workflows to Terraform IaaS resources. So one of the challenges that has been experienced in the industry with provisioning via Terraform is it is great to provision um, against APIs. One of the challenges becomes um, the ability to then tie post-provisioning task to the particular provisioning operation. So an example is provisioning an EC2 instance. If you get into a scenario where you now need to run or initiate configuration management or some sort of post-provisioning configuration against the instance, then there it becomes a, a challenge of figuring out the best way to integrate that automation. So that's it, 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 an example might be looking to integrate Terraform as well as Ansible. The challenge sometimes becomes figuring out the best way to tie together the two tools. And one of the things of note is that um, configuration management provisioners in HashiCorp Terraform have been removed. Uh, they've been deprecated for a while and provisioners have been recommended as being used only as a last resort. So the challenge becomes finding a great way to integrate an automation tool, automation capability with the provisioning of Terraform instances. The other aspect becomes also starting to integrate other things like backup and DR um, with instances and provisioned via Terraform. 
So that's really the, the value of the Terraform instance types within the Morpheus platform is being able to, to integrate all those hooks in the various different pieces as part of the provisioning process that are native to Morpheus with HashiCorp Terraform or instances provisioned via Terraform. So we'll walk through an example of what that might look like. So in this particular scenario, we're gonna walk through what it looks like currently um, and then walk through what instance types enables us to do. So Morpheus integrates with Terraform to trigger or execute the Terraform run. And then in this example, Terraform provisions an EC2 instance. And then the conundrum that we start to have is the best way to integrate post-provisioning operations. So being able to configure the base OS for that instance or deploy middleware, deploy security agents, whatever it might be that is being leveraged as part of the provisioning process. Typically, it would be something like Terraform calling out to um, an Ansible or figuring out ways to hook into external tools that may not have a REST API. So that's where we start to have things like local execs, um, remote execs within Terraform to be able to effectively provide that escape hatch to trigger automation against the resource, in this case, an EC2 instance that was provisioned via Terraform. So Terraform would call the automation and then the automation would interface with the EC2 instance. With Terraform instance types, we sort of changed that model to be able to then have Morpheus as part of a provisioning workflow interface with the automation. Could be Ansible, could be a Python script, it could be a Bash script, whatever automation is created that is supported by Morpheus provisioning workflows to be able to interact with that. And what this provides is the ability to start to tie all of the existing governance and capabilities around provisioning workflows that are native to Morpheus with native Morpheus instances to Terraform instances provisioned via Morpheus. And at that point, there's the configuration of the instance via Ansible that's been triggered by uh, Morpheus. So we've got a couple more questions that came through. Question is, will Terraform-based instances have access to all the option list as instances created via Morpheus. Uh, all the option lists. So it'll add the addition of the uh, provisioning workflows and the provisioning workflows um, will possibly have the, the option types. Um, I'm not sure exactly which option lists are being referred to. All right, so let's existing resource groups in Azure. Uh, so in regards to the, the particular question around option list for net, existing networks and data stores, uh, that one I'm not sure of. So we'll, we'll have to, to follow back um, as we get, as I get that information. All right, so let's continue on. So the, the best thing would probably be is to, to reach out to the sales team um, to follow up and make sure we get, a, get an answer to your question. So we walked through Terraform instance types and the additions made to Terraform within the platform for the 5.3.1 release. Um, now let's take a look at cloud formation changes that have been made. So similar to what was done in uh, the integration of Terraform instance types with Terraform, similarly has been done with the cloud formation integration. Um, in this particular case, the ability to be able to edit and update the cloud formation associated with an instance within the Morpheus UI. Um, so going and be able to, to update the, the cloud formation associated with the provisioning of that instance as part of the platform. So being able to do things like refreshing of the state as well as applying new state um, via the Morpheus UI. 
Additionally, a new tab has been exposed um, within the provisioned resource to expose things like events, parameters, outputs, and additional information as far as the CloudFormation stat. There's also the ability um, within the UI to detect configuration drift between the current resource state and the desired resource state. So along the same lines as the improvements to the Terraform integration, similarly continue to provide additional visibility and continue additional functionality for resources provisioned via cloud formation. Let's take a look at uh, Kubernetes within the Morpheus platform. So there are three key aspects that the platform looks to provide for Kubernetes clusters. So it's build, manage, and consume. Build is building out and deploying Kubernetes clusters. Manage takes into account managing existing Kubernetes clusters as well as managing the provisioned Kubernetes clusters um, within the Morpheus platform. And then finally, consume is the actual consumption of Kubernetes as it relates to application deployments. So this particular release includes a number of updates or enhancements for the, the build component of Kubernetes within the Morpheus platform. So support was added for Kubernetes 1.20 in this release of the platform for Azure Kubernetes Service, or AKS. The platform supports provisioning Kubernetes clusters uh, via AKS. Native or built-in Kubernetes cluster layouts um, across vSphere, Nutanix, AWS, Azure. Um, so this is the Morpheus Kubernetes distribution that is being provisioned. Support has been added for 1.20. And then not so much to build, but this particular release does add support for uh, existing brownfield clusters for Kubernetes 1.20. There have also been updates to the Morpheus Kubernetes engine outside of supporting Kubernetes 1.20. Open EBS uh, in the built-in cluster layout was replaced with Rook as the default Kubernetes storage orchestrator. And then this release includes built-in and optional packages for Kubernetes. So think of the packages as ecosystem components often ran with Kubernetes, such as Grafana, Prometheus, Istio, uh, and others that are included as packages uh, as part of the platform. And if we take a look at the manage piece, so Morpheus Kubernetes Cluster Manager is part of the platform enables the management of heterogeneous Kubernetes clusters. So support for um, MKE or Morpheus Kubernetes engine, which is the, the built-in cluster layouts provided in the platform. Um, Rancher, OpenShift, VMware Tanzu, AWS EKS, AKS, um, support for uh, compliance or CNCF conformant Kubernetes clusters uh, of various flavors. There's the ability to be to import those into the Morpheus platform and manage those. One of the, the key things added in this particular release uh, is improved uh, management of Kubernetes clusters. So being able to discover and manage additional resources like persistent value claim, volume claims, configuration maps, um, mm -hmm. and, and other resources that were not there in the platform uh, in the previous release. So this continues to solidify the ability to uh, manage Kubernetes clusters as part of the Morpheus platform. One of the other exciting things about this upcoming release is Morpheus VDI. So in this release of the Morpheus platform, VDI will be generally available. Uh, so it's the, the GA release of Morpheus VDI. Morpheus VDI lets you access Windows and Linux desktops um, that are hosted on-prem or in the public cloud simply via a web browser. So one of the things that was added in the previous release of Morpheus, so 5.3.0 was the beta version of VDI and included a new persona within the UI, which is the VDI persona, which is what we see here on the screen. So a simplified UI just simply for accessing VDI, uh, whether it's a full desktop or just an application from that desktop. So some of the things of note with VDI, as I mentioned, 
Windows and Linux desktop support, access to full desktops or individual applications. So there's the ability to be to run something like an Excel or a Word um, via that desktop, but simply access the, the application, not the full desktop. Supports desktops in public clouds, AWS, Azure, GCP, the clouds that are supported by uh, the underlying Morpheus platform, being able to provision virtual desktops into those. So let me follow back. So got a couple questions that came through. Can we brownfield existing Red Hat OpenShift Kubernetes clusters? It's one of the questions that came through, yes. So adding it into the Morpheus UI, the ability to be able to import um, existing Red Hat OpenShift clusters, yes. Next question is access to VDI is created via web or is there any client for the desktop? There is no client for the desktop. It is going into your browser um, and then logging into the Morpheus UI. And if there is a, a VDI persona associated or um, so there can be a dedicated VDI persona where a user simply only has access to VDI or if let's say you're uh, an admin of the system, being able to have VDI as one of the toggleable or selectable personas um, for things like whether it's an admin desktop or whatever it might be uh, as a possibility. But there is no client, so it's accessed via a web browser. Private cloud support for VDI. Uh, so provisioning into your uh, vSphere, Nutanix, OpenStack, um, the list goes on. Uh, in terms of private cloud, so private clouds uh, or on-prem infrastructure that the Morpheus platform supports, for desktops can be provisioned into. Another question came through, is there a possibility to connect external devices to VDI? Uh, so I'm assuming um, potentially things like serial uh, connections, things like that. Um, at the moment, I am unaware if there is the ability to connect the external devices. Um, so that's one of the things definitely definitely follow up on. So I would say connect with with your your sales uh, sales folks and and be able to follow up on that question. Uh, one of the other things is SSO integration. So the Morpheus platform supports uh, SSO integration, things like Okta, One Login, um, as part of the platform. So that would be the the connection point for the virtual desktops. So what that means is users needing to log into Morpheus VDI. Um, as long as SSO is set up on the platform, there's that tie-in to have them authenticate via SSO to get, to, to get access to their VDI desktops. Uh, another question came through around VDI. Uh, will there be an opportunity to have different app stacks for different user pools? Uh, so in relation to VDI, there's the ability to have different pools of desktops that may have different applications installed. So let's say I have a data scientist group that may need a special application. I can have a pool for data scientists, my data scientist folks, um, separate from maybe a general user pool or an admin pool uh, to be able to specify different applications uh, that are present on those desktops. So hopefully that answers the question. Another question came through around VDI. Is VDI considered a Morpheus work, workload element? So in terms of licensing, it would be the, um, the desktops that are provisioned um, would be workload elements as it relates to Morpheus. Um, so provisioning, uh, let's say 10, 15 desktops um, would be 10, 15 workload elements. So those are effectively treated as servers or workload elements within the platform. All right, improvements to uh, VDI or enhancements really uh, to VDI in this particular upcoming release of Morpheus 5.3.1. So VDI Gateway. So this provides a scale out connection broker uh, for virtual desktops. So what would happen is the user would authenticate to the Morpheus UI um, via something like an SSO 
or uh, local users. And then the connection would be brokered to the VDI gateway to provide that, that access to the virtual desktop. Um, so in essence, it's offloading the, uh, the process of the, the connection. So all the brokering the connection between the, the user and the virtual desktop to offload the need for the uh, Morpheus platform to handle that uh, within the, the Morpheus core infrastructure. Other thing that's been added is uh, VDI jump host. So for environments or scenarios where the uh, Morpheus platform doesn't have direct access to the desktop that's being ran or the particular workload. So let's say it might be something like a secure server or whatever it might be, having a way to uh, effectively have a bastion be used as the means of accessing that virtual desktop. And so the, the VDI gateway, as well as the VDI jump host, uh, will be provided via uh, system packages, as well as there has been work done on Docker containers to be able to uh, use those as Docker containers. API CLI support uh, be added in 5.3.1 for automating the management of VDI pools using uh, the Morpheus CLI or the REST API as desired. Additional improvements, um, Ansible Tower enhancements have been made. So inventory sync from Ansible Tower to Morpheus from an inventory perspective. There have been improvements made from a multi-tenancy standpoint uh, via inventory mode, as well as a tenant default execution for those that are running uh, multi-tenant environments and looking to leverage Ansible in the master tenant um, to manage things uh, via the, the sub-tenant to enable a, a governed uh, execution from the master to the subtenant as far as uh, given Ansible execution. Improvements to VMware NSX. So another step towards feature parity between the Morpheus NS, NSXV and NSXT integrations, as well as uh, other general improvements related around multi-tenancy. Uh, one of the things that's also been added in 5.3.1 is native two-factor authentication. So the support for two-factor authentication for internal LDAP and Active Directory users uh, to leverage um, phone applications. So things like um, Google Authenticator, uh, Microsoft Authenticator, as part of a, a two-factor authentication method. So the question came through is, can MFA be forced for all tenant users? Um, at the moment, it cannot be a, a forced requirement for all tenant users. Um, right now it is uh, more of a, an, an opt-in or optional situation where it cannot be forced at the moment. So another question came through. In regards to Kubernetes, do the improvements to MKE mean improvements to the built-in Kubernetes cluster layouts and scripts, or is there some underlying improvement done? For example, a fully functioning uh, management dashboard or workflows for Kubernetes. So the improvements to uh, MKE or Morpheus Kubernetes Engine, which is the uh, Morpheus Kubernetes distribution, means improvements to uh, the built-in cluster layouts. So going into the platform and provisioning Kubernetes, um, one of the things was mentioned was the support for Kubernetes 1.20, as well as migrating or replacing um, OpenEBS with Rook, as well as adding capabilities for built-in packages, as well as optional packages around components of the, the Kubernetes deployment. Um, as it relates to things like workflows, workflows are already there uh, in terms of what can be ran or executed against the Kubernetes clusters uh, as part of the deployment process. Um, and then that is really the, 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 the list of, of updates and improvements in addition to the, the, the management aspect, which is uh, supporting additional resource, Kubernetes resources for manageability uh, as part of the platform. Hopefully that answers the, the question. Uh, 
Another thing that's been added in the 5.3.1 release is an internal CMDB. Uh, what this does is inventory the resources from connected private uh, public clouds for improved visibility across hybrid and multi-cloud environments. Um, one of the things really uh, valuable is just the ability to get visibility into um, various resources provision. So let's say AWS as an example. One of the challenges oftentimes with managing AWS environments is the ability to readily see all the resources that have been provisioned across um, just AWS regions. Oftentimes it's, it's figuring out a script or um, trying to leverage tagging to identify all the resources provisioned, uh, but the ability just to be able to have a, an inventory of all those resources is extremely valuable. So question is, how much control is given for the internal CMDB? Can we add additional fields for custom data? Um, at the moment, I do not believe there is support for adding uh, additional fields for custom data. At the moment, it is uh, inventorying the, the resources that have been uh, discovered within the, the, the cloud accounts. Uh, one of the, the last things is API CLI for integrations. So integrations within Morpheus are things like adding uh, the Ansible Ansible Tower integration or ServiceNow integration hooks into other systems that the Morpheus, in, Morpheus platform can interact with. So now there's the ability to be able to create uh, and manage some of those integrations via the API CLI to uh, simplify management of those particular integrations. So additional information about the upcoming 5.31 release. Uh, there will be a blog post when 5.3.1 is released. Um, so look out for that. Um, in addition to that, once it is released, you can find uh, the full list uh, of features, improvements, and changes in the release notes, and then also be able to download the 5.3.1 release uh, via the Morpheus Hub. Um, for those that haven't experienced Morpheus, um, there is the Morpheus Community Edition that can be downloaded via the Morpheus Hub to get your kind of get your hands dirty and, and see what the platform is like. Uh, for those that have have been using Morpheus for some time um, and are unaware of the Community Edition that is available uh, for for consumption, and what that does is provide a uh, a version uh, of the Morpheus platform that is restricted uh, to a, a, a smaller workload element count uh, for interacting and, and getting hands-on with the Morpheus platform. And then there's also uh, ability to schedule a uh, demo to walk through Morpheus to understand how Morpheus platform can help your organization. Uh, just go to the website, morpheusdata.com, and then slash demo. And there is a, a simple form that uh, we see right here that can fill in a few pieces of information and request a demo. And one of our sales folks will reach out with additional uh, information and set up a demo as part of the process. So that's been the, the, the overview from a technical standpoint of, of what's, what's new and coming in the Morpheus 5.3.1 release. Um, appreciate everyone for joining and asking questions, uh, feel free to, to reach out via the, the different methods um, discussed and look forward to, to seeing uh, consumption of the Morpheus 5.3.1 release. Thanks for coming and appreciate the time.